Bueno, Hello all my fishy friends and welcome back to another Stay Fishy Adventure. Today we're coming at you with another Tiny Island Challenge. And as you can see in this video, the boat's empty. Other than that bag full of a surprise. I'm not going to tell you what it is. But our goal today is going to be to feed ourselves and survive on this tiny island with no fishing rods. You guys have been giving us some awesome feedback on these tiny island adventures. And so we had no choice but to come at you with another one. Today's challenge is not going to be an easy one, but I'm excited to try it. So stick around. It's going to be an awesome day full of fun. Thank you all so much for being here. Let's do it. So our goal today on this island is going to be to catch, cook and eat the salmon. And obviously we don't have any fishing rods. And the only tools I'm going to allow myself to complete this goal is some duct tape, a hatchet, paper clips, and yeah, some cheating, a fishing reel. That's right, everybody, you guessed it. We're gonna build a fishing rod with these tools and see if we can catch a fish for dinner. Let's get started. Okay, first order of business, we have to find the proper rod. And all we're gonna use is just an alder bow. I'm gonna cut one of these pieces of wood that's gonna be the right strength and the right length for the rod. And then we're gonna turn that bad boy into a fish catching machine. So let's find a good one. I think what's gonna be most important is finding one that's perfectly straight so that it has a good action, so that it actually has a good bend to it and it's not gonna break when we finally do hook a fish. Let's see here. This one looks perfect. Might take a couple of tries, but that's bushcraft for you. She's a beaut, Clark. a little bit of a bend to it, but I think that'll be okay. Maybe we can straighten her out a little bit. This is a nice green piece of wood. But, looks fishy, wouldn't you say? Little think so. So I think I'm gonna shorten it up just a little bit. It's probably about 10, that's probably 11 or 12 feet right now, so I'm gonna go to about nine feet. Cut it off right there. So now it's time to bring our paper clips into play. I think I'm gonna put my reel about 12 inches up. Gives me a good rod butt to hold on to so I can control these fish. So now I need to use these things to make the eyes of the rod. I don't think the duct tape's gonna to stick to this wood very well. So I'm gonna to have to try to fashion these things on here somehow so that they'll hold. I think that just might work. Okay, I'm gonna bend this over. See if I can get it to stick into the wood a little bit. There we have it. 
guide number one. Guide number two, complete. Guide number three. And now the trickiest part is the rod tip. I'm gonna keep this little knot here so that that tip doesn't slide off, but I need to get rid of the excess. So let's cut these little guys off without cutting my finger off. pretty good to me. You want the tip to be the smallest of all, so I'm gonna do it about a pinky finger size. There we have it. We're all guided up. Make sure to line them up. Don't want a crooked pole. Check it out. Okay, now for the reel. Actually fits on there really nicely. See how it lays right along with the stick? It's a heck of a stick we got here. I'm impressed. Now it's time for the good old fashioned duct tape. Oh God, oh God. This isn't going well. This is not going well. I'm just gonna go with it though. I've committed. There's no turning back now. This is a survival situation, it doesn't have to be perfect. Huh, idle fish. Let's see the comments below guys, what do you think? What do we call it? What do you think we should call it, Little? I think we'll call it the Tiny Island Pro. Let's see if it works. Okay, I brought a bobber too. Okay, it's time to let this baby work her magic. Let's see how the first cast goes. I don't have any bait on it yet, I just wanna see how it works. Like a charm, oh my God. Now this is a fishy situation. Okay, so I did bring some bait here because it's hard to catch these salmon without it. And the real goal for the day is to catch a fish on this rod. So we wanted to make that possible with a yummy little treat for our fish friends. Here goes nothing, everyone. Got a really good feeling about this, everyone. A really good feeling. Oh, it's gonna happen. Oh, there he is. Got him. Oh, he's gone. We were that close, everybody. We were that close to victory. Third cast, even. Okay, we're gonna go right back through there. He likes it, he wants it, he needs it. Eat it, eat it. Dang it, we missed our chance. Mr. Fish did not eat the second time, but it's not over. So far, this Tay Fishy 5000 is impressive. Has a great action, good backbone, great castability, and above all, it's just fishy. Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. We need to eat, so we're gonna abandon our tiny island and work our way up river, see if we can't find us a fish. Okay, we made it. It was treacherous, 
had to work our way all the way up across this island into a little more of an urban setting. But it's an urban tiny island adventure. What's wrong with that? That's the one. There it goes. All right. Get out here in position. See if we can make some magic happen. Bombs away. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my. Oh, he's there. Oh no, he's not. Oh my god, everyone. Definitely missed one. Well, spot number two is a fail. All we can do is keep trying. Ah! And I don't have any bait left. So hungry. Well, new day, same place, same goal. And this time I'm cheating a little bit. The idea of this video wasn't so much to make it a survival challenge, but to test out the survival technique. I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to build a rod with paper clips and duct tape that was gonna withstand a salmon. And we still haven't found that out. We fished all the way till dark last night, but I'm cheating a little bit. I got back in the regular boat and we're gonna see if we can put a fish on the end of this line. So wish us luck. Let's do it everyone. Tightening up my guides a little bit. This piece of wood dried out a little bit last night, obviously, because I cut it off at stock and it doesn't have any more water or nutrients. So better tighten my guides up a little. I'm getting a little bit loose on me. I should do it. Let's fish. Bombs away. everyone oh he's gone oh I can almost taste it it almost tasted like victory oh, this has been a lot harder than I thought and so this time of year in the Pacific Northwest when, while we're doing this challenge and testing out this theory of whether or not this is gonna work we can only keep certain kind of salmon and then only only certain fin clip salmon which are from a hatchery uh, and so we've moved to an area that's a little bit closer to the hatchery where we might stand a little bit better chance of finding those fish but very first cast had one on. Oh, we know this rod can hook them, but can it fight them? That's getting bit. Oh, that was a nice one. Oh, that's what dinner looks like. There's a bazillion fish jumping, guys, and I'm telling you right now, it's not the survival rod that's letting us down. Oh, oh, that one hit my line, literally. <laughs> I thought I had one while I was talking to you guys. Oh, God, this is embarrassing. <laughs> oh, that was a nice one. <laughs> okay. Here we go, world. New hole. New opportunities. That last one was pretty embarrassing. I did not come through. Oh, I'm already getting one. No, no, I just, I got my friend here. <laughs> I got it perfectly through the hole. Look at that, look at that. Okay, here it goes. Getting bit, I'm getting bit. Still getting bit. Oh, and a rod is bad luck. I'm throwing it in the river when we're done with this challenge, everybody. Shows the wrong stick, if you know what I'm saying. Story of my life. Great design, great backbone, great everything, but I swear this thing has a touch of bad luck. This is probably the hardest that I've had to try to catch fish of any kind in a long, long time. It's been a two-day ordeal. It took us about 
quarter of a day to make this thing, three quarters of a day of not catching anything. And now we're at about halfway through our day and still have not caught a damn thing. I've had our opportunities, but I think this, this thing is just a touch of bad luck. Good thing we're really not trying to survive here. Oh my God, I'm starting to get hungry. This has just been a one hell of a day, I tell you. Am I getting bit? I don't know, I don't believe it. I got one! I got one! Oh, I got one! Oh, the reel's falling off. Reel's falling off, should have doubled up on the tape. Okay. Oh God, this looks like one we might be able to eat. It's shiny, it's the right size. Yes, it is. Get over here, little guy. Please don't come off, please don't come off. We got him. <laughs> we got him! Woo! The uh, Stay Fishy 5000 survival rod came through in a pinch. Today, it got us some food. And there it is. Let's see the comments below on what you think of this geriatric setup. High five, everyone. Okay, I got this thing good and bled. I ripped his gills out so that he beats all the last little beats of that blood out of his, you can see coming out of his system there. I'm gonna make sure he gets good and bled so it tastes good. And you know what? We worked up a hell of an appetite today. Let's cook this thing up on the boat. Man, it doesn't get a whole lot fresher than this. I'm actually just gonna fillet this thing. It's just big enough. We'd call this a jack salmon. And this is a coho salmon. You can tell it's a, a hatchery, and the, which means we can keep it because it's missing this little tiny fin right here. So it was the perfect scenario, perfect situation, perfect fish on our homemade rod. I couldn't be happier. A little more nutrients back to the river. Look at how beautiful that meat is. What a little treat this is gonna be. And the cool part about these things is you can actually keep quite a few of them. So if you're out here by yourself in a survival situation, or if we're having to use this, this rod again in a situation where we have to catch and eat everything that we're gonna survive on for that day or a couple of days, these are perfect size because they preserve pretty well. They stay on ice, they get nice and cold, and uh, they make for a great, great survival tool. my butter nice and hot make sure it's all melted there and I'm gonna go real simple on this stuff I'm gonna go a little bit of seasoned salt a little bit of Montreal or kicking chicken some nice spice basically some some onion some thyme a little bit of cayenne give it some spice get that nice and rubbed in there on a good crispy skin and in we go yum Wow, I wish you guys could smell this right now. A little fresh ground pepper. And to keep this stuff from curling up really bad like it's starting to, we're just gonna apply some pressure. That's gonna make sure I get a nice crispy skin going here. You can see how I'm making that nice and flat. It's not bubbling up on me and curling up to where it's not gonna evenly cook. But these are pretty thin pieces of fish, so this should cook through pretty quick. Mmm, that smells good. Smells good, everybody. It smells like victory. That's what it smells like. I wanna see the comments below, you guys. I know you've been asking me to do some gnarly survival challenges and it's coming, I promise. We've been all over the place. We've been really busy and haven't been able to set aside two or three or four days at a time to go out and do one of these actual survival challenges like you guys have been asking for. But I'm kind of building my repertoire. I'm building my tools for this challenge itself uh, slowly and, and doing these things to make sure that I'm semi-prepared to really get stuck out somewhere for five, six days at a time. Um, but I'm really excited to be bringing them to you. So let's see some comments below on maybe some regions you wanna see us do this, uh, kind of maybe even a list of what you wanna see us be able to take with on this trip or on these trips. Um, you know, one of my very favorite YouTube channels to watch survival style is just the good old school survival man. 
or Survivor Man rather, um, Les Stroud, basically in my mind kind of pioneered the YouTube video uh, before it was even YouTube. And then one of my newest favorites is Oven's Rocky Mountain Adventure. So big shout out to you guys. And uh, same to you, Greg Oven. I would love to come to Canada and film with you and, and get to learn some of the awesome bushcraft techniques that you use. But nonetheless, we're thinking of you guys while we're enjoying this amazing meal that our little bushcraft rod brought us. Look, it's still kicking. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Does not get any fresher than that. Warm up our plate a little bit. And we're about to taste victory. Okay, we're gonna eat the pretty one for you guys. Oh yeah. That, that flesh kind of deglazed that pan. We got a great char going. See, we got nice color in the middle there. Nice and juicy. Oh God. Thank you, Mr. Fish. Actually, we got a lot of shout outs to give here. Thank you, River. Thank you, Stick. Thank you, uh, Stay Fishy 5000. Uh, thank you, Okuma Reel. And thank you for the fish who gave us the fish eggs to catch this one. So, and thank you, you fish, for this awesome meal. Mmm. Holy hell, that is good. Worth every minute spent. And every blister on my tongue. Mmm. Mmm. Once again, I want to thank all you Stay Fishy fans out there and all you new folks who are coming around from around the globe and watching this new channel. It's been growing so fast and I am so excited about it. The survival challenges have been doing really well. So that's why we're still bringing them to you guys. But you guys are the viewer and YouTube only pushes what you guys like to watch. So be sure to be commenting through these videos, letting us know what kind of videos you want to see or which ones from the past are your favorite. So I can make ones just like that again. So until next time, everybody, thank you so much for being here. Same time, same place next week. You all stay fishy. And we'll see you out there. Oh, that was a nice one. Oh, oh, that one hit my line, literally. <laughs> oh, that was a nice one. Okay. Oh, God, this is embarrassing.